What's up guys, so today we're going to be talking about using IPSLA in order to influence a static route that we have set on a router. So in our network topology that you see in front of you, you have we have two different ISPs that we have a default route to. One is the primary route and it has um, default route, no administrative distance configured as you can see here. I just sure run pipe include IP route. We have two different static routes, one with going to ISP1 with no change in the AD, and one pointing to ISP2 with a floating uh, administrative distance of two. It's a floating static route. So right now, if we look at our routing table, you can see that only the lower of the two and AD wise got installed into the routing table. So that's fine. And right now, if the link between router one and ISP one physically goes down, then it will switch over. But what if the physical link is still up, but we don't have reachability out past the uh, physical link, what we're connected to? So if you think about it, if you have a, a DSL or a cable connection, you would have a modem sitting right here. And that modem would be connected to your router and then it would be connected to the provider's equipment. So the provider link could do, go down on their side, but your router would still think it was up physically because the modem's up. So that's the problem here is that even though the link might not be working, the, the router won't, won't see that unless you configure your tracking with IPSLA. Um, so we'll get straight into this. Start off. So you can see that we have the, the normal two routes, one not being installed in the routing table right now. And there's no tracking or anything configured already. So first off, we need to create the probe. Go under config. So we say IPSLA and give it a number. Doesn't matter what the number is. So now we need to specify what kind of IPSLA you can figure it, what we're setting up. And for this, we just need to do a ICMP echo. And then we say the destination that it's going to try to reach. And we'll give it the IP of ISP1. So the next part is uh, you can set the source interface. So the interesting thing that could happen if you don't do this. Let's say that you have, you know, you have it configured to go to the ISP1 somewhere. Um, maybe the router, the, the service provider has or whatever so the problem with this is is you could be using the default route and then the link goes down so it starts using this this path but what if you could reach the other side of what you're trying to reach here in ISP1 well then it would reinstall the static route and then it would keep going back and forth to where it would not be consistent. It would keep flapping. It would say up, down, up, down. And we can fix that by saying to only use this interface to try to get out. Because if it can't get get there with that interface, then it's not the link is not up. But for now, we're just going to say the destination. And then we have some more options. We can set the frequency threshold or um, the timeout. So the timeout is how long it waits for a reply to send another one. And the threshold is what the, pretty much like a hold timer in a routing protocol. So for this, we just want to set the frequency to five. For every five seconds, it will send, it will verify that it's reachable. So now we need to schedule the start of the IPSLA. So we go to schedule and then say the IPSLA number. 
and then we set the start time which we want to start now and then we can give it a life so we want um, we want it to occur now and we want it to last forever there's some different things you could do for this you could schedule it for a specific time and date or anything you want it to do pretty much but I just want to do this and now the uh, IPSLA ICMP echo it should be running so if we do show IP SLA stat you can see that it already failed it's because the link in router 2 is down shut down now we should see that it will have a success once it once it starts starts being able to reach it again and there we go so you could see before that the operation return code was timeout and now it's okay because it's up so now we need to tie this into the static route somehow we can't do it directly but there's a uh, and a feature for tracking which will track that it's kind of a middleman between the, the IPSLA and the static route so if we go to track give it a number doesn't matter what the number is it's not it doesn't have to be the same and then we say IPSLA and then the number for the IPSLA would say reachability so we want to verify that it's reachable or, or, or not and then that should be it. Do show track one. You can see that the latest operation return is okay because it was up. All right, so now that we did that, we go to the stack route. And we want to say track and then the track number which was one and then that's it so now you can see that we have that route install installed and do show run pipe and code IP route you can see that right here track one and the other one is set the administrative distance is set to two so whenever the uh, IPSLA won't can't reach ISP one it will withdraw the route and then we'll switch over to the other path so we can test this out by going and reversing what I did earlier by shutting the port which physically shutting the port would cause a normal static route to also fill over, but it's the same same concept. We'll just see what it does. We can see that the reachability went down, and now if we do show IP route, we are now using the other route instead of the uh, the first one. So that's one simple way that you can provide some redundancy uh, with the default route. It might not be the best option for you, but it's there and there's many more things that you could do with IPSLA. So if you have any more questions, just let me know in the comments and thank you for watching.